When I first heard about this conference and was interested in participating in it, I began to think about the overall theme and the school motto, the care of the future is mine. And the words that really struck me were care, as in taking care, and is mine. The words the future receded a little bit for me. And what I heard was advocacy. What I heard was a call to action that as citizens and not as subjects, it's our responsibility to actively participate in the world around us and not simply to be observers or consumers. And that if we do that, if we fulfill that responsibility, then to a large extent, the future will be taken care of. Well, the way that I have decided in my professional life to engage in the world around me is to tell stories. Now, you might say stories. Why is that important? Why are they important? The writer Joan Didion has very succinctly stated, we tell stories in order to live. Nothing short of existence uh, dep is dependent upon, uh, uh, relies on telling stories and passing them on. She has gone on to say, we live by the imposition of a narrative line upon disparate images, by, by the ideas with which we have learned to freeze the shifting phantasmagorica, which is our actual experience. The stories that I tell about New York's built environment, as well as its intellectual and cultural and political history, have taken the form of books. Some of them very long reference books, 1,300 pages with 7,000 footnotes, and some of them more pictorial. Uh, recently, the, my storytelling has taken the form of museum exhibitions. But whether it's a book or an exhibit or a 10-minute presentation, to me, it's always about telling a story. Stories, I think, no matter how imaginative or interpretive, need to be accurate. You need to know your facts. That's the place you have to start. The public intellectual and senator, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, said everyone is entitled to his own facts, but not, I'm sorry, his own opinion. <laughs> everyone is entitled to his own opinion, but not his own facts, and that is a fact. Uh, when I was curating an exhibition on uh, the senator's life and work for the Museum of the City of New York, I gathered those facts in a subterranean warehouse where I had no cell phone service, and I needed to go through hundreds of thousands of documents and cull the letters and memos uh, that conveyed the facts of his life. And they then served as a kind of spine running through the exhibition uh, and they were surrounded by images of this larger-than-life character. Sometimes facts are best presented in a very straightforward way. Uh, here we simply listed uh, Moynihan's Senate achievements on a wall, but in other cases, uh, presenting them in a more graphically arresting way is effective. This is an image from an exhibition uh, surveying 50 years of Lincoln Center, and alongside uh, large-scale reproductions of memorable productions and opulent costumes from operas and uh, ballets are facts ranging from the number of people who visit Lincoln Center annually to the number of grand pianos uh, used by Juilliard students. While it's important to know your facts, it's also important to bring in everything that you know, not just what you've gathered in that particular assignment. For you are, after all, what you know. And the source of this quote is a very uh, important one, my great-grandmother. When I uh, was working on an exhibition about uh, photographs from Look Magazine of New Yorkers, Look Magazine donated hundreds of thousands of images to the Museum of the City of New York, I was trying to think of an overarching theme. And resonating in my head was uh, my favorite essay about New York, uh, which was written by E.B. White in 1947 called Here is New York. And he starts out by making the point that many New Yorkers come from other places. And very often they didn't really feel like they belonged wherever it was that they were from. And they came to New York to invent themselves. And the last line of the first paragraph is, 
no one should come to New York to live unless he is willing to be lucky. And this to me reveals something really important about New York, a defining feature is ambition. So with that in mind, I was able to select photographs of ambitious New Yorkers, some well-known, some not. This is an image of a model applying makeup before a show. In terms of using what you know, this is an image uh, from an exhibit on the work of the uh, architect Enrique Norton. This was a proposal for, and a, a rather developed design, for an arts library in Brooklyn, which sadly was never built. But I thought for a broad audience uh, to learn something about architecture, to know something about how an architect works, about their process would be interesting. And I have spent a great deal of time in architects' offices. So along with this computer-assisted rendering and uh, models that show the development of the uh, proposal, I recreated a wall in the architect's office, which was known as a pin-up wall, where he would literally uh, just tack up images of the design development uh, of buildings that uh, inspired him. All the way on the left, you can see a picture of a frog. The frog's translucent skin was an inspiration for the skin of this building. And so I think you begin to learn something about how New York uh, buildings come into being. While it's important to know the facts, while it's important to bring in everything you know, it's equally important to trust your material. Chinue Achebe has memorably said, it is only the story that saves our progeny from blundering like blind beggars into the spikes of the cactus fence. The story is our escort. Without it, we are blind. Does the blind man own his escort? No, neither do we own the story. Rather, it is the story that owns us. I was asked to curate an exhibition on campaign memorabilia, going back to the time of George Washington. Well, I cull through hundreds of little things, campaign buttons, scraps of paper, odd souvenirs. These were not the Elgin marbles. These were not uh, objects that were created for the ages. These were objects that were created essentially to be thrown away. So I thought, well, what can I do with these? But as I looked at them, they told me a story. And that story had something to do with the nature of participatory democracy and the role that New Yorkers have played in it. And it is this odd combination of very high ideals and ballyhoo, typical New York. Uh, what we see at the bottom, one of the objects we see at the bottom, is a chamber pot. And on it are the initials of uh, Grover Cleveland and his running mate. I never did, and this was a campaign souvenir, I never did understand if this was intended as a compliment or an insult to the candidates. But it just seemed typical to me of the kind of objects that have been created uh, and that reflect our political spirit. <laughs> okay? Um, in terms of the story, uh, the material telling you a story, I was asked to curate an exhibition on the role of New Yorkers in the Spanish Civil War. Well, at first that might seem like a rather obscure topic. What did New Yorkers have to do with an internal conflict that happened thousands of uh, miles away now decades ago? But as I looked at the material, some of which came from City University, City University uh, students, or at that time college, uh, students and faculty played a disproportionate role uh, in the uh, Spanish Civil War. As I looked at the material, I realized that, again, this was a, a, a telling me a larger story about a fundamental transformation in New Yorkers' identity that happened in the first half of the 20th century, where they went from thinking of themselves essentially as merchants that were important on both a local and national level to true citizens of the world. I now have an exhibition on view about uh, colonial revival architecture and design, uh, which is plentiful in New York, and New York has played a very important role in codifying the style and in uh, popularizing it nationwide. On view are things such as uh, reproduction furniture, plates that were manufactured by Bloomingdale's. One might say, well, why would I go to a museum to see things like that? Uh, but the reality is that taken together, they tell an important, uh, an important story about how New Yorkers have participated in creating a unified and unifying national visual taste. 
after you've done these things, after you've learned the facts, after you've uh, let the material speak to you, after you've brought to bear what you know, in the end I think it's important to remember, really essential to remember, that telling stories, creating stories, and passing them on is essentially about connecting with other people. My Angelou has said, I've learned that people will forget what you've said, and people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Standing in front of the great New York Public Library on Fifth Avenue and 42nd Street and looking at the lions, at patience and fortitude, many people feel intimidated. But I was asked to curate an exhibition in conjunction with the 100th anniversary of this building, which really celebrated their collections, their remarkable collections, and their remarkably accessible collections. And I worked with very talented designers who, with colorful banners, were able to invite people into this building and lead them through the uh, stately Astor Court and into the main gallery where they could enjoy and have intimate experiences with remarkable uh, items from the permanent collection. Here we see Audubon's Birds of America. Here we see the first Gutenberg Bible brought to the New World, and that is seen in juxtaposition with selections from the library's massive digital uh, gallery. And it, this became a kind of invitation to engage in the city's intellectual life. And perhaps no institution uh, represents the importance of being a citizen than the New York Public Library one of the, the, the most accessible and important public libraries in the world. In the end, uh, to me, stories provide a kind of reality, a kind of complex reality that really nothing else does. There is a traditional Jew Jewish state saying, what is truer than the truth? And the answer is the story. So I... Uh, it's really been my pleasure to be, and my privilege, to be a storyteller, to create stories about New York, and to pass them on. Thank you.